Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. You're gonna love today's video because I'm gonna go over my top 10 list as to why you should buy the Garmin R10. I'm also gonna go over some of the deficiencies that I've come across as I've owned the device now for about 15 months. Now, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing right now. It'll really allow my channel to grow and allow me to bring more videos just like this to YouTube. Let's get right into this. So I really wanted to do this list because I would still buy this after 15 months. And I have gone through some struggles and I'll take a break after I get to number five. And these are all debatable. Uh, there are some people that would never buy this device because it doesn't have a camera. You know, there are some people that wouldn't buy it because it's not officially supported with some software like GS Pro, which is what I primarily use it for. But I'm gonna go over all those aspects in this video. So let's start out with number 10. You can use your own ball. Now, you can also use RCT balls to get improved spin rates. Some people put stickers on there. It may make a bit of a difference. Um, I've not tested the RCT balls. I feel like I get pretty accurate results. Um, I took quite a few golf lessons with a golf coach last year and I used TrackMan and I used Foresight and my numbers are very similar with my swing speed, uh, you know, my distances for all my clubs and all that. So I know that it's accurate. Number nine, it has great battery life. I have never ran out of juice not even close. They say it can go up to 10 hours. You know, I charge my name after every single session, so I'm never gonna have that kind of a problem. But I can tell you, I've used it outside and used it indoors for 15 months, and I've not even come close to 60% on my battery usage. And that's even after, at the most, using it for three and a half hours on a session, like maybe playing with buddies, playing around a golf or whatnot, or practicing. So I just, that's an amazing part of it that it lasts that long. Actually, just incredible. Number eight, it works with GS Pro. Now, it is not supported. However, I find that whenever I talk about the Garmin R10, what people seem to be most interested in is either Awesome Golf or GS Pro. I have both. I have a lifetime subscription for Awesome Golf and I also have the uh, GS Pro. I actually have two uh, subscriptions for GS Pro. One I use upstairs for when I create content and then one I have down with my golf simulator in my garage, which is where my golf sim is. So again, it is not supported. Does it make it the best choice for GS Pro? Definitely not. It's not supported. If you need help connecting to GS Pro, you're gonna have to find information on like YouTube or something like that, forums and videos like I have on my channel. I've made many videos on how to connect it with a free Bluetooth connector from GitHub so that you can use it, but it is not supported. If you contact Garmin saying, I need help connecting to GS Pro, they're not really gonna be able to help you. It's not supported. And same thing with GS Pro, you're gonna need help. It is open API, but they're not really gonna be able to help you because it's not supported. So, you know, GS Pro has an open API interface, so you can use pretty much any launch monitor that you get a connector for with it. And, you know, the Rapsodo and the Garmin R10 are two of the options that a lot of people use that have connectors that you can use it. And I can tell you the software is tremendous. Now, I also want to, while we're doing this, um, talk about a few of the software options later, but that's gonna be my number two uh, point here. All right, number seven, the versatility of how you can use it. You can use it with a net, you can use it outdoors at the range, you can track it on a monitor, you can track it on a phone or an iPad, or use it with a full blown golf sim. I've done all of those things with the exception of the iPad. It works very, very well. Not only that, you know, if you're just going to use it with your phone or with an iPad, the Garmin Golf app has free driving ranges. You don't have to pay for them. You can download the app for free. You know, and you can use their like Home Tee Hero 
Um, it's like $99 a year, $99.99 a year, or uh, $9.99 a month. Uh, it's not gonna really translate very well to a full bloom golf sim because you don't have very many options to fill the screen as much. And then you, it's the graphics aren't as good as some of the software like GS Pro and Awesome Golf and you know Golf Club 2019, which I'll talk about here in a minute. It's just a bit cartoony, but it's fine. All right, number six, there's no subscription whatsoever. You know, you get, like I said, you get the free driving ranges uh, in the free Garmin Golf app but you don't have to pay a subscription yearly like you do on some of these other launch monitors. Would I like to have some of the higher end launch monitors, you know, like a TrackMan or a Foresight or Bushnell, you know, FlightScope, stuff like that? Yeah, I would, I would love to have those launch monitors. But right now, it's still working just fine with GS Pro uh, and Awesome Golf, and um, I have zero issues with connectivity. Once I worked out the bugs, which I'll explain in a moment. So I love that it doesn't have a subscription. I saw it recently for $4.99. I saw it recently for $5.49 in the last couple of weeks. But the typical price over the last couple of years has been $599. So once you pay that $5.99 or whatever price you get it for, there's no subscription. That leads me into number five number five and that is the price so you know you look at some of the other launch monitors while they may be potentially more accurate or maybe able to do more for you like putting you know you can't really putt with the garmin r10 unless you set up like a webcam and there's a way to do that but it, there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through to putt with it because it doesn't have a camera built in uh, or you can use like X putt, but that's a, again, another entity uh, for putting. I don't putt because of that. Uh, a lot of people, I've watched their videos on YouTube and even guys that have the ability to putt, they don't because it's just, you know, it takes a lot longer to play uh, instead of auto putting, which is occasionally you'll get a three putt if you're way out on a green. And to be honest with you, it might happen anyway. All right, number four, the monitor is accurate. The launch monitor is accurate. It has been my experience that it is accurate. Comparing it to some of the launch monitors that I've used with golf coaches and also what I've tested and other YouTube content creators for golf simulation and golf channels that are out there all around the world that have compared it to other launch monitors it is accurate, I can tell you that. Number three, that leads me into number three. I've tested it for you. I've tested it with a net, I've tested it with a full-blown golf sim, and I've tested it for 15 months, and I've tested it with tens of thousands of swings, and I've worked out the kinks with it. Any of the videos that I have going back in my channel over the last year, will explain how to set it up to get accurate results and to be able to connect it to various software. Number two, software versatility. This is a huge one. Let's take a look at it. So looking at this graphic, some of the supported and unofficial softwares that you can use is, here are the supported. You do have to pay a subscription for these, or buy it outright, like Awesome Golf, you can buy a lifetime or you can do a subscription. Multi Hero, they have a subscription. E6 Connect, they have a subscription. A little bit more realistic software. Creative Golf, I don't know much about that. I believe that you have to have a subscription for that as well. The Golf Club 2019, uh, that is just a flat. And then GS Pro, which a lot of people seem to be very interested in. GS Pro will work with the Garmin R10. It is what I use. I use it weekly and it works very well with the Garmin. However, it is not supported. You can download uh, various connectors from different places. Like I got my connector, uh, you know, like over a year ago for GS Pro from uh, GitHub. And I have a video on how to connect to that. 
So that connector has been updated a couple times and it works just fine. So before I go to my number one, I wanna go through some of the deficiencies that you may experience with the Garmin R10. However, these deficiencies, they can all be overcome in some way. And the number one thing is it does not have a camera. So that deficiency, part of it is you can't putt or it may not be as accurate for different things. So that is a deficiency, but I think it does a good job with the algorithm, whether you're using like an algorithm from your software or the algorithm that is built into the Garmin, it does a really good job at, you know, gauging what my swing speed is, you know, gauging what my ball speed is, my spin rate. They say that if you use RCT balls that you can get a higher spin rate, up to 50% better spin rate, especially with a driver. So, you know, I guess you could call that a deficiency. Um, it has trouble chipping inside of say 10 yards, really more inside of about eight yards. So. If you're close to the green and you've got, you know, you're 15 feet away or 10 feet away and you decide that you, you know, you want to chip it onto the green, you may have to do it a bunch of times. And I found different ways, whether it's move the ball back on the mat or take a longer back swing slowly and bring it down, not conducive to real world golf. However, let's face it, it's not real world golf anyway, it does a good job. I've seen this happen with other launch monitors that they have a hard time picking up the small chips. All right, uh, it's not officially supported with GS Pro. Is that a deficiency? Not really. You know, it, it's a lot of people seem to be interested in the Garmin for GS Pro. A lot of people, thousands and thousands of people use it with GS Pro, me as well. Um, I don't think that's a problem. You know, you can find enough information, whether it be from my channel or other channels that are out there on YouTube, there's plenty of people that are out there making videos every day on how to connect it and how to use it. Again, putting. Putting is a challenge. I don't have any interest in putting at this time. I would like to eventually when I do upgrade my launch monitor, but really there's no putting unless you set up some convoluted you know, webcam and then you're gonna have to adjust your lighting and or you can use like X putt and I have to set mine up every time because mine's in my garage. I keep a classic car uh, in my garage. I pull that in there, so I have to pull my mats out. I keep them inside my enclosure and all that stuff. So really for me, it's just not an option to set that up every single time. You need more space. So with me, I don't have any problem. I've got about 22 feet of length. So I've got, you, you wanna have at least eight feet between your ball where you strike the ball and your screen or your net or whatever you're gonna use if you're using it with a golf sim. And then you're gonna wanna have at least six and a half feet behind where you strike the ball for your launch monitor. And that can create an issue if you have, if you don't, if you have enough width, you know, take your swings and stuff like that, but you don't have enough length for you know, your, your launch monitor and the distance between your, where you strike your ball and uh, your screen or your net, you got a problem. So you can use like a Bushnell or a Foresight or a Trackman or any of those right next to where you strike the ball. Um, but what you run into with that is, what if you have lefties too and you're a righty? You, you can't go back and forth with, you know, the, the Foresight or the Trackman. If you've got a launch monitor that sits behind you, like the Trackman, something like that, or a Rapsodo or a flight scope, those are great for lefties and righties back and forth. I don't really find this to be a big problem for most people. However, it can be a problem. I keep my ball where I strike my ball on my mat is nine feet, 10 inches from my screen. I am seven feet, three inches where I set my launch monitor from where I strike my ball. I find that that gives me outstanding accuracy and results from all of my shots. Uh, radar interference, that's another deficiency that you could have. So some people actually get radar interference with their projector. 
And then I've seen where people will build like a Faraday cage around the projector to prevent this radar interference. And I had it whenever I would turn a fan on or an electric heater. So I bought, you know, I don't really care about the fan as long as a portable AC would work, which I had. Luckily I have a window on my garage. So I just set up a heat pump in there, a portable heat pump, and it cooled my garage down, no problem. I have a finished garage. And then in the winter time, I bought a uh, kerosene heater, an indoor kerosene heater with the uh, 1K kerosene that you can use indoors and that solved that problem. However, I hung curtains that go from the ceiling to the floor. I have 11 foot, three inch ceilings in my garage. I'm very lucky. Shaq could golf in my garage, no problem. So when I hung these curtains, and I did it really only for the aesthetics of my golf channel, so that it would just look more professional and just block things off, the radar interference stopped, which was just unbelievable to me. So I don't know something about the material of those curtains it doesn't bounce around in there and it doesn't cause a problem with the radar interference. I can now run a fan or an electric heater in there, which is really weird, but for whatever reason, maybe you know why it stopped when I hung those curtains. Also, you're, you're going to want to have a good, strong Bluetooth signal. So if you have a big room and you're using a PC, it may not have as good of a Bluetooth as you want. So I kept getting, it kept disconnecting from my awesome golf and it kept disconnecting from GS Pro and honestly, I almost gave up. And FlightScope would have loved that because I was about to spend $3,000 to get the FlightScope with the Pro package. And I just almost gave up because I got so sick of it disconnecting. I would get so ticked off every time it happened and I almost quit. But it turned out that I needed a better Bluetooth connector because the one that was installed inside of the gaming PC was not good enough for the three car garage. So I bought a $15 long range connector with an antenna from Amazon, solved the problems. I never get a disconnect and I've been using it for months now with that without any issues whatsoever. Lastly, the graphics are not good in the app, so it's not really, you know, the Garmin golf app. It's great if you can use a monitor, like hit into a net and use a monitor. Like I at first I had set up like a 30 inch TV or something like that and or 40 inch TV and I hit into a net and then I eventually graduated to the golf sim. And once I got the golf sim, I realized that that just wasn't going to work. Um, but you get free uh, driving ranges and you can you know, take it to the driving range, monitor your shots on it and track them. And uh, you know, the, it's, if you do the Home Tee Hero, it's like $9.99 a month or $99.99 a year. And uh, has like 42,000 golf courses, and including probably your local golf courses. It's not gonna be that accurate. It's not gonna have great graphics, but it's a nice tool to practice with. So that's it for the deficiencies. And again, if you go back through all of those, there's a way to overcome all of those. So really with any launch monitor, there's gonna be ups and downs. You know, and if you watch every video and every review on it, you'll find that. All right, number one. Number one is the Garmin R10 has high end radar metrics. And what I mean by that is, with some of these other launch monitors, you have to pay a subscription to get higher end radar metrics. In other words, things like swing speed, uh, you know, could even be spin rate or, or, you know, smash factor or whatever that is that you may want. It has high end uh, radar metrics. Let's go over those. All right, so what it includes is club head speed, club face angle, club path angle, angle of attack, ball speed, launch angle, launch direction, spin axis, spin rate, apex height, smash factor, carry distance, total distance, and deviation distance. Lots of stuff to help you improve your game without a subscription. I contend that you may or may not be able to improve your game using a golf sim. I had a hard time improving until I used a golf coach so I could analyze my data 
from my ball launches from the Garmin or whatever software I was going to use and analyze what exactly was happening. You know, I was swinging over the top at first, you know, and, and it was creating an issue where I would just, you know, slice off to another world. So I was able to fix that by using a golf coach and using the Garmin R10 with other software in interpreting once I learned about why things were happening by using the Garmin and the uh, software to get better. And it did help me get better eventually. And you have to be really careful because if you're using a crappy mat, you may still hit the ball, but you know, if that's real world and you hit the ground, that's not real. So I got a better mat and it's a little bit more realistic so that if I hit behind the ball, I'll get penalized for it, which is what I want. Well, that's gonna be about it. There's your top 10 list, along with some deficiencies that can be overcome. I certainly do appreciate you watching today. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and share it with any of your friends that may be interested in the Garmin R10. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel right now. I'm really trying to hit that thousand subscribers. So please hit that uh, subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, and I will really appreciate it. Help the channel to grow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.